Q-ships, also known as Q-boats, decoy vessels, special service ships, or mystery ships, were heavily armed merchant ships with concealed weaponry, designed to lure submarines into making surface attacks. This gave Q-ships the chance to open fire and sink them. The basic ethos of every Q-ship was to be a wolf in sheep's clothing. They were used by the British Royal Navy during the First World War and by both the RN and the United States Navy during the Second World War, as a countermeasure against German and Japanese submarines. First World War Following the First Battle of the Atlantic by 1915 Britain was in desperate need of a countermeasure against the U-boats that were strangling her sea lanes. Convoys, which had proved effective in earlier times, were rejected by the resource-strapped Admiralty and the independent captains. Depth charges of the time were relatively primitive, and almost the only chance of sinking a submarine was by gunfire or by ramming while on the surface. The problem was luring the U-boat to the surface. A solution to this was the creation of the Q-ship, one of the most closely guarded secrets of the war. Their code name referred to the vessel's home port, Queenstown, in Ireland. These became known by the Germans as a U-boot follower. A Q-ship would appear to be an easy target, but in fact carried hidden armaments. A typical Q-ship might resemble a tramp steamer sailing alone in an area where a U-boat was reported to be operating, by seeming to be a suitable target for the U-boat's deck gun. A Q-ship might encourage the U-boat captain to make a surface attack rather than use one of his limited number of torpedoes. The Q-ship's cargoes were light wood or wooden caskets, and even if torpedoed they would remain afloat encouraging the U-boat to surface and sink them with a deck gun. The crew might even pretend to abandon ship. Once the U-boat was vulnerable, the Q-ship's panels would drop to reveal the deck guns, which would immediately open fire. At the same time, the white ensign would be raised. With the element of surprise, a U-boat could be quickly overwhelmed. The first Q-ship victory was on 23 June 1915, when U-40 was sunk off eye mouth by the submarine HMS C-24, cooperating with the decoy vessel Taranaki. Commanded by Lieutenant Frederick Henry Taylor CBEDSCRN, the first victory by an unassisted Q-ship came on 24 July 1915 when the Prince Charles, commanded by Lieutenant Mark Wardlaw, DSO, sank U-36. The civilian crew of Prince Charles received a cash award. The following month, an even smaller converted fishing trawler renamed HM Armed Smack Inverley and successfully destroyed UB-4 near Great Yarmouth. Invalian was an unpowered sailing ship fitted with a small three-pounder gun. The British crew fired nine rounds from the three-pounder into UB-4 at close range, sinking her with the loss of all hands despite the attempt of Invalian's skipper to rescue one surviving German submariner. On 19 August 1915, Lieutenant Godfrey Herbert of HMS Baralong sank U-27, which was preparing to attack a nearby merchant ship. About a dozen of the U-boat sailors survived and swam towards the merchant ship. Herbert, allegedly fearing that they might scuttle her, ordered the survivors to be shot in the water and sent a boarding party to kill all who had made it aboard. This became known as the Baralong Incident. HMS Farnborough sank at MU-68 on the 22nd of March 1916. Her commander, Gordon Campbell, was awarded the Victoria Cross. New Zealanders Lieutenant Andrew Dougal Blair and Sub-Lieutenant William Edward Sanders VC. DSO faced three U-boats simultaneously in the Helgoland while becalmed and without engines or wireless. Forced to return fire early they managed to sink one U-boat and avoid two torpedo attacks. Sanders was promoted to lieutenant commander, eventually commanding HMS Prize. 
He was awarded the Victoria Cross for an action on 30 April 1917 with U-93, which was severely damaged, perhaps remembering the early action aboard Q-17. Sanders waited, while his ship sustained heavy shell fire, until the submarine was within 80 yards, whereupon he hoisted the white ensign and the prize opened fire. The submarine appeared to sink and he claimed the victory. However, the badly damaged submarine managed to struggle back to port, with his ship accurately described by the survivors of U-93. Sanders and his crewmen were all killed in action when they attempted a surprise attack on U-43 on 14 August 1917. There may have been as many as 366 Q-ships, of which 61 were lost. After the war, it was concluded that Q-ships were greatly overrated, diverting skilled seamen from other duties without sinking enough U-boats to justify the strategy. In a total of 150 engagements, British Q-ships destroyed 14 U-boats and damaged 60, at a cost of 27 Q-ships lost out of 200. Q-ships were responsible for about 10% of all U-boats sunk, ranking them well below the use of ordinary minefields in effectiveness. The Imperial German Navy commissioned six Q-boats during the Great War for the Baltic Sea into the Handel Schutz flotilla. Both were unsuccessful in destroying any enemy submarines. The famous Mo and Wolf were merchant raiders. A surviving example of the Q-ships is HMS Saxifrage, a flower-class sloop of the Ankusa Group completed in 1918. She was renamed HMS President in 1922 and served as the London Division RNR drill ship until 1988, when she was sold privately and remains moored at King's Reach on the Thames. Interim period the United States had the US Gold Star, a civilian cargo ship purchased in 1922. During the 1920s and 1930s Gold Star became a familiar sight in the far-flung ports of Asia. Though assigned as flagship of the U.S. Navy at Guam she made frequent voyages to Japan, China, and the Philippines with cargo and passengers. Prior to World War II, much of her crew was made up of Chamorro, natives of Guam with American non-commissioned officers and commissioned officers. The Gold Star became a bit of a veteran Q-ship dealing with communications intelligence as she moved from port to port and while in port in the Orient. She had three intercept operators and one chief radio man supervised by an officer. This all started in 1933 during the reconstruction of the Japanese fleet by Tokyo and continued into the summer of 1941. The Gold Star along with ground stations in Guam, Olongapur and Beijing provided significant intelligence before the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. Second World War. Nine Q ships were commissioned by the Royal Navy in September and October 1939 for work in the North Atlantic. 610 ton HMS Chasgrove X Royal Navy PC 74 built 1918. 5,072 ton HMS Maunder X King Grufford built 1919. 4,443 ton HMS Prunella X Cape Hell built 1930, 5,119 ton HMS Lambridge X Botley built 1917, 4,702 ton HMS Edge Hill X Willamette Valley built 1928. 5,945 ton HMS Brutus X City of Durban built 1921, 4,398 ton HMS Cypress X Cape Sable built 1936, 1,030 ton HMS Lewex Beauty built 1924, 1,090 ton HMS Antoine X Sorchi built 1930. Prunella and Edge Hill were torpedoed and sunk on 21 and 29 June 1940 without even sighting a e-boat. 
The rest of the vessels were paid off in March 1941 without successfully accomplishing any mission. The last Royal Navy Q ship, 2,456 ton HMS Fidelity, was converted in September 1940 to carry a torpedo defense net, four four inch guns, four torpedo tubes, two OS 2U Kingfisher float planes, and motor torpedo boat 105. Fidelity sailed with a French crew, and was sunk by U-435 on 30 December 1942 during the battle for convoy on 154. By January 12, 1942, the British Admiralty's intelligence community had noted a heavy concentration of U-boats off the North American seaboard from New York to Cape Race, and passed along this fact to the United States Navy. That day, U-123 under Captain Lieutenant Reinhard Hardagen torpedoed and sank the British steamship Cyclops, inaugurating Pau Kenschlag. U-boat commanders found peacetime conditions prevailing along the coast. Towns and cities were not blacked out and navigational buoys remained lit. Shipping followed normal routines and carried the normal lights. Pauk and Schlag had caught the United States unprepared. Losses mounted rapidly. On January 20, 1942 Commander-in-Chief, United States Fleet, sent a coded dispatch to Commander, Eastern Sea Frontier, requesting immediate consideration of the manning and fitting out of Queen ships to be operated as an anti-submarine measure. The result was Project Hell Q. Five vessels were acquired and converted secretly at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, Kittery, Maine. The Boston Beam Trawler MS Wave, which briefly became the Auxiliary Minesweeper US Eagle before becoming US Captor, SS Evelyn and Carolyn, identical cargo vessels that became US Asterian and US Attic respectively. The tanker SS Gulf Dawn, which became US Big Horn, and the schooner Irene Myrtle, which became US Irene Foresight. The careers of all five ships were almost entirely unsuccessful and very short. With us Attic sunk on its first patrol, all Q-ships patrols ended in 1943. American Q-ships also operated in the Pacific Ocean. One was us in Akapa, formerly the Lumber Transport Coos Bay, which was converted to Q-ship duty as Project Love William. In Akapa was not successful in engaging any enemy submarines although she is believed to have damaged two friendly subs with depth charges when they were improperly operating in her vicinity. Inakapa was also withdrawn from Q-ship duty in 1943 and served out the remainder of World War II as an armed transport in the South Pacific and Aleutian Islands. Proposed use against modern pirates Attacks on merchant ships by pirates originating on the Somalia coast have brought suggestions from some security experts that Q-ships be used again to tempt pirates into attacking a well-defended ship. Q-ships in fiction In Ernest Hemingway's novel Islands in the Stream the main character Thomas Hudson commands a Q-ship for the U.S. Navy around Cuba as he hunts the survivors of a sunken German U-boat. Malcolm Lowry's novel Under the Volcano tells the story of Jeffrey Furman, an alcoholic British consul in the small Mexican town of Quanawak. On the Day of the Dead, the 2nd of November 1938, Jeffrey Furman reflects back to his time as a naval officer during World War I, when he was court-martialed and subsequently decorated for his actions aboard a Q-ship. In James H. Cobb's novel Phantom Force the main character Amanda Lee Garrett commands a modern Q-ship of the U.S. Navy. In contrast to other Q-ships this ship is not a retrofitted merchant vessel but a newly constructed military vessel built to look like a bulk carrier. The main deck of the Q-ship can be converted to a flight deck. The ship is capable to deploy several rotary wing aircraft and amphibious vehicles that are stored in its cargo holds. 
In the novel the ship is used to intervene in a military coup in Indonesia while the USA formally do not intervene. In Neville Shute's novel Lonely Road the main character, Malcolm Stevenson, was a Royal Navy lieutenant on the Q-ship Jane Ellen which sank a U-boat in World War I. As with other naval concepts, the idea of a Q-ship has also been applied to space vessels in fictional works. Q ships feature prominently in David Weber's Honor Harrington series of books. Harrington destroys a Q ship in the first novel on Basilisk Station and commands a squadron of Q ships in the sixth novel, Honor Among Enemies. Harrington's snotty cruise captain, Thomas Batchfish, commands a pair of privately owned Q ships in the tenth in the series, War of Honor, in the Star Trek Deep Space Nine episode, Return to Grace. Major Kira and Gulducat convert a Cardassian freighter into a Q-ship to pursue a Klingon vessel which had destroyed an outpost in the Starfleet universe. All major spacefaring racers use Q-ships disguised as small and large freighters as convoy escorts to thwart attacks from enemy races and the Orion pirates.